Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right place if you're looking to raise the bar in real estate, whether it be you know entry level, starter homes, average priced homes, but we do specialize on high end and luxury here on the Luxury Listing Podcast. Again, if you have any questions, please send them to us, support at marketingluxurygroup.com, support at marketingluxurygroup.com, or if you want to nominate somebody to be on a podcast on an episode you think they'd be a great fit perhaps it's somebody uh, that would fill a void in a topic that we haven't talked much about go ahead and send those to support at marketingluxurygroup.com or if you have any questions about today's episode and our guest uh, that's a great place again previous episodes check them out itunes stitcher and other platforms and if you learn something from our podcast, if you get a nugget that you can implement and bring more value to your your marketplace or to your business, to your team, please leave us a review. If we've earned the five-star review, we could use more of those. All right, let's get right into today's episode. Um, I have known Jim Wahlberg is our guest. Uh, he's out of the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've known him, I knew about him through conferences, and uh, he's he's somebody that I just, you could tell is well-respected. People are always attracted to to him and go and talk to him, and and he's like a magnet. People always want to talk to him at these events, and Jim always takes the time to to meet and greet people and, and talk to them, and he's got really a giving heart. Um, he's a community volunteer, a blogger, a philanthropical, very um, much so. He's uh, an athlete, uh, he's a wine detective, is, is, like he says in his bio, a sailor, a skier. And he's a husband and dad, and um, that's what I like about him. He's very approachable. hes I won't share his age. He can share it if he wants, but he doesn't need to be selling real estate, but it's not work for him. He attracts opportunities. He attracts clients because he doesn't treat clients like a paycheck. He doesn't treat them like they're just another, you know, transaction. And that's what I love about him. But today we're going to talk about a lot of different things. But before I do that, I want to bring Jim on. Jim, you there? Hey, Michael. uh, Thanks so much for including me in your podcast. Absolutely. Jim, Jim Wahlberg, the Bay Area team, uh, he's, he's out of the San Francisco area, and uh, I think you shared with me, you've been doing this for 30, 31 years, is that correct? Yes. So this is, this is something that you've seen the change. We talk about disruptors all the time, and, and uh, you know, over the last year to two, that's a big buzzword I'm seeing at all these conferences, but you were, you were selling real estate back when they had those big old books that uh, we didn't have the, the MLS. You had to look up the, the books. Is that correct? Yes. No, we had the the book was the, um, the goose laying the golden egg at that time. Oh, my goodness. Well, you are in an area, uh, the San Francisco area, where it's a melting pot, you, not just from a diversity, but also from a relocation. You get people relocating to the Bay Area. And I think I've read on your website, uh, you've been contacted from and, and had customers from, you know, over 62 countries either seeking properties or needing assistance. And so that's something that's real estate's global, but luxury definitely is global. So the Bay Area team, you guys are dealing with not just local uh, inquiries, but international inquiries. And one of the things I love about your website, too, is you have the option to to read about you and and to search some properties in in various languages. I, I believe there was eight or nine languages I saw there from Spanish to French to, you know, to Italian, German and and, and others. And uh, that's very important, especially if you are in a 
in, in a part of the country that you have a big melting pot. So uh, kudos to you, Jim, for being, um, you know, ahead of the curve, so to speak. And let's talk just local real estate shop in that, that Bay Area. Uh, you know, as we're approaching 2020, what are you seeing? Um, you know, many people are talking about, you know, election year 2020 is going to be a stagnant year. A lot of people are going to be on the fence uh, just because they don't know who's going to be elected, that sort of thing. But overall, what, what do you see occurring as 2020 approaches in your local market? And then what do you see, you know, throughout the U.S.? The geographic area that we serve, Michael, I, I view it as uh, that we're hanging out on an economic island. Uh, there's six different districts or more in the Bay Area, geographic districts, uh, and we are uh, so fortunate that the economy in the Bay Area, I think, is about the ninth in the world. Uh, it's just incredible. Uh, so the I never planned it that way. Uh, I've been in the Bay Area since 1970. Uh, my first house that I purchased was $68,000. Uh, I never imagined it would turn out this way where right now our particular practice, our average uh, home price that we represent or help people buy is a million eight. Uh, so that wasn't uh, my plan. It just happened geographically that that's where I landed. The challenges that we have in the Bay Area, believe it or not, is affordability. Uh, it is uh, the number one topic when it comes to uh, people either uh, leaving or considering coming to the Bay Area. Uh, we have, we've had a declining uh, growth rate in, in California. It's gone from 0.9% in 2015 uh, to 0.4% in 2019, uh, and the issues are affordability. Uh, right now, 30% of our sellers are moving out of state, uh, which is a, a gigantic change for us uh, in the work that we're doing. Uh, and the number one reason why they're leaving the state uh, is affordability, and that's uh, 28% of those folks that are leaving the state after they sell our house, it's affordability. Uh, so it's a it's a big deal. Uh, in uh, I think it was in 2015 or 2000. It was 2012. The median price, the, the median income that you had to have in order to purchase a home was ninety thousand uh, dollars. In 2019, that number is now one hundred and ninety seven thousand. Nine hundred and seventy. Uh, so ninety thousand, ninety thousand to one ninety seven thousand, one hundred ninety seven thousand in seven years. Is that what you said? Correct. Holy uh, cow! So, no, it's a it's a holy cow, Michael. Uh, yeah. By two thousand twenty five, California for the first time will have a majority of renters, uh, hmm. and it's because of the affordability issue. Yeah, you know what? I'm based in the Chicagoland market, and as you know, you know California, high tax states uh, are, are are losing population. So you know New Jersey, Illinois, California, and they're they're losing population of people. You said a, th a third, thirty percent of people selling their homes today are moving out of state. I don't know what that statistic is in Illinois or New Jersey or New York, but I, I know it's I know it's high. And you hit the nail on the head that, uh, you know, affordability is a big part of it, but tax, taxing is, is, is another part of it. So, so yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, usually homes are depreciating. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are you seeing depreciation a little bit or at least stagnant leveling off? Or are you still seeing appreciation in that, that upper end market, Jim, based on what you just shared with me? Well, let me, I'm going to answer that question in a minute, Michael. Let me go back to the exiting out of California. We are still having a positive inflow to California. So there's more people coming in that are exiting. Uh, I think in the last 10 years or so, we've had 750,000 people leave. But we've had more coming in. The challenge is 
who is leaving and who's coming in. People that are leaving are uh, folks that we need in our infrastructure. It's administrators. It's uh, it's uh, our waiters at the restaurants. It's uh, it's the folks that are are helping the, the machine run. Uh, and those that are coming in are really high tech folks and and uh, computer engineers and architects and mathematicians and healthcare practitioners. Uh, and so on. So those that are coming in are very high income folks. And those that are leaving are folks that just can't afford to live here anymore. When you're when I'm answering the question about what's happening with our pricing, uh, it actually has to do with the neighborhood. Uh, just like in your your practice, Michael, when somebody asks, you know, how's the real estate market? Uh, my responses will tell me the neighborhood and I'll, I'll let you know because mm-hmm. the neighborhoods are different. Yeah. Uh, in, in our region of the six districts of the Bay Area, prices are, are doing just fine. And those homes that are turnkey uh, are flying off the shelf uh, within 10 or 12 days. Uh, those now, turnkey. Are, what price? What price point is that? Out of curiosity, is that around that 1.8 mark, or is that less or more? No, it's probably from one five to two million. Okay. In fact, we probably had the the largest uh, number of two million dollar sales uh, and above in the Bay Area ever. Uh, so the 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 difference is happening compared to a year ago is the velocity of the market has changed. Uh, instead of, I think our average days on market uh, a year or so ago for our listings was 10 days or less. Uh, the Today it's 35, 40 days. And again, I'm sharing these statistics knowing that it's absolutely absurd. Our numbers are absurd compared to other par- parts of the country. Yeah. Uh, no. So I know that. I mean, I, and I, it's, it's almost embarrassing, but uh, that that's our market. So prices are holding fine, and those that are in turnkey condition are 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 doing great. The the sellers that understand that they must get their home into a turnkey condition are the ones that are doing really well. Well, just for what it's worth, Jim, we have probably two to three years of inventory in that $1.5 million and above. So you're talking years of days on the market. I mean, uh, 300, 600 days. I mean, there, there's one community right now. I'm selling a home in a town called Barrington Hills, Illinois, and it's a list for $2.5 million, And we have literally six and a half years of inventory in that community of $2 million and above. So, um, yeah, yeah, just to kind of give you give you some take. Well, really interesting information and background on that Bay Area. I, I appreciate that. Um, so you've been doing this for 30-something years, 31, I think you told me yesterday. And the one thing that I was very impressed with is how you stay in touch and you communicate with your past clients in your sphere and um, you, you talked about a 40 touch approach, right? You're, you're touching your, your sphere, your database uh, 40 times a year. Is that correct? Well, it's, it's 40 or more times a year. Yes. 40 or more. And talk to me a little bit about this. Is everybody being touched the same way or depending on their price point or how many times they've bought and sold with you or how big their, their socials, you know, their sphere of influence, uh, you know, talk to me about that. Talk to us about that. If you would. Well, our audience uh, is uh, about 800 uh, uh, families. Okay. And, and these are families that we generally have served over these Three plus decades. Um, the game that, the, and so I'm going to talk about a game, Michael. The game that I imagine that we're playing is called the positioning game. Uh, so if I said to you, Campbell's, what would come to your mind? Campbell's? Yeah. I, I, would, I would think of the soup company. Right. So Campbell's 
has won a position in your mind that soup and Campbell's are synonymous. Mm -hmm. You did not go to class to have that happen. Correct. Uh, they, it happened because of a, uh, a very focused, long, long-term marketing program that Campbell's Soup has done. Uh, we would like to have the same position in the mind's eye of our audience where when they think of real estate or hear about real estate or discussions about real estate, the first thing that comes to their mind is us. So the way that we imagine that happening and the way it has happened is through a constant touch program uh, where it's uh, humorous at our closing table and where, where uh, title is being transferred, uh, we let our, our clients know that uh, we're like a bad cold where we're never going away. They're, they're just not going to be able to get rid of us. <laughs> uh, and everyone laughs and, and that's exactly what happens. And it's, our touches are a combination. Uh, and your question is a valid one as to, does everybody get the same touch? The answer is no. Uh, our touches have to do with uh, postcards. It has to do with handwritten notes. Uh, it has to do with, uh, special drop-offs that has to do with uh, client events throughout the year. Uh, right now, for instance, uh, we have what we call our top 100. Our top 100 get into that category, not because of the number of homes they purchase, but because of the number of referrals that they provide us. Uh, so our top 100 is our top referral base uh, for our practice. Uh, Right now, we're in the midst of delivering, hand delivering uh, my wife and business partner, myself, poinsettias to each one of those uh, homes and to those families. We call them up in advance to make sure they're home, uh, and then we drop off a poinsettia. It is about a three-week uh, process of doing this every day uh, because the folks want to have us come into their home. They want us to uh, uh, show us all that they've done since the last time we saw them. Uh, so they that's a very high touch. That's a very high touch example of of touching our database. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being personable, being present, you know, having a relationship, right? And so they want to bring you into the home because they don't view you as a salesperson. They view you as a trusted advisor. You mentioned to me yesterday that. You're getting past clients, kids now as clients. Yes, we did not imagine that we would uh, have an entrance into the millennials, but that entrance into the millennials has been amazing because of the, of the kids of our clients that have grown up with us as the trusted advisor of their parents. And now we are in the midst of assisting them. Uh, so again, this was not a, a, a organized game plan to have that be a result. It's a result of just being consistent, uh, continually deepening relationships with our with our clients and our database. And then uh, this is what happened. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. So let's step back. So we have some people listening to this show that maybe are newer agents, maybe haven't sold a high end or luxury property. And by the way, I, I I, I love the fact that when you uh, a few minutes ago talked about it, someone says, well, how's the market? How are home prices? And you said it really depends. Every neighborhood's different, right? And so luxury is all relative to that given market. So for our certification, which is called Luxury Listing Specialist, Jim, we defined luxury home prices as homes that are three times the average sale price for that given market. So it's all relative. You could have one side of town with a certain type of school and three times the average sale price is different there than it is on the other side of the track, so to speak. And so um, talk to me a little bit about 
you know, you've been in the business for over 30 years and you've worked your price points up. But if you had to wave a magic wand and go back to your younger self and you were just looking to uh, give some advice or get advice on uh, agents looking to break into and, and, and sell high end luxury homes, what advice would you have for anybody today based on your experience and what you know? Well, the first place that I would go with is a phrase that that uh, I would start off with. Uh, put yourself in opportunity's way. Uh, mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. is it that these homeowners are, uh, where are they in the community? Where are they hanging out? What are they doing? Uh, what are they doing for their uh, charitable uh, work? Uh, for instance, uh, one of the groups that I'm very passionate about is our local food bank. Well, it happens that those that are on the board and that are very involved in the food bank uh, that have a like mind that I do of of figuring out a way to feed people that are hungry uh, happen to also be uh, presidents of corporations. They happen to be uh, executives. so uh, there's no intent on my part of getting referrals from my connection to the food bank, but because we're working together side by side, it happens. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. So the 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 concept of putting yourself in opportunity's way uh, is where I would start. And I know that may be pretty global, but where are the luxury homes uh, owners? Where are they? Where are they? Are they uh, at the country club? Are they uh, uh, playing tennis? Uh, and I would also uh, suggest that those that are wanting to break into that market is do the things that you love to do uh, and and start there. I mean, I'm not interested in you taking up golf if you don't like golf. Uh, do the things you love to do. There's a running club, for instance, in our town that has a community run every Wednesday at six o'clock in the evening. Okay. Uh, the amount of people that uh, I've met at that running club over these last 25 years, I've, I went there to run. I didn't go there to develop business. Right. Uh, the business happened because of the relationships of doing things that I love to do. Yeah, it, you brought up a good point, right? I mean, in today's day and age where there's a lot of uh, people not being sincere or, 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 or fake, you know, there's a lot of people being fake out there with videos and trying to be the next million dollar agent and all these different things. You know, you hit the nail on the head. You talked about what are you passionate about? What do you enjoy? But But also put yourself in those positions to build relationships, um, you said put yourself in an opportunity's way, so to speak. So if you're not a golfer, then hanging out at the country club probably doesn't make sense. But perhaps you're a car aficionado, and you know there's some car club, the exotic car club, and they have co- you know they have coffees and and donuts once a month at their their car club, and you can meet there with people and talk to them, and and you like cars, and that would be more in alignment of what your passion is versus hanging out at the country club. Correct. Good advice. Good advice. Uh, Yeah, and when people that I don't know, uh, I'm at a social event. Uh, Let's pretend I'm at a social event, and people ask me, Gosh, what do you do? Because that's what people do at a social event. Uh, I say, well, I look for opportunities to be of service uh, to people in my community and also to my community. I just look for opportunities to be of service. And that's what I tell them. So I'm not uh, not pitching me as a realtor. Uh, They'll discover that at some point or not. Uh, I'm, I'm just really in the business of looking every day for ways that I can make a difference in somebody's life or in our community's life. You know, and, and, and that's, you know, that, that's a real big 
reason I have you on today's show is your approach is totally different and it's refreshing. You were talking about, uh, we were talking a little bit about production and I won't, we won't go into that on this, but, but you did bring up the fact that you, you guys are having a great year, but you don't, you don't put it out there. Hey, number one, or we had our best year ever or whatever it might be. You're very humble what you do. You don't do it for those reasons. But if you have a servant mentality where you lead with a giving hand, you have the same philosophy that we have, and that's good things will happen to you, right? If you, if, if you give, you give, you lead, you lead, you lead, you know, the best way to get referrals is, is, is give them, right? Is, is lead with a giving hand, help others out, and opportunities and potential clients and referrals will naturally come your way because of it. You're absolutely correct, Michael. Yeah, that's 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 good. A good reminder for those of you that are that are listening today. You know, again, have a servant mentality. Now, there's always going to be takers in this world, but but so if you give, 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 and you refer, refer, refer to some, you know, interior designer or, or kitchen person, and and they don't do what they say they're going to do, or they don't appreciate your referrals, or they don't treat them with the same level of attention to detail and respect that that they used to, well, then that's a totally different conversation. But what we're talking about right now is, you know, having a servant's mentality, you know, Jim talked about how he, he, he looked to bring value any way he can in his community and naturally opportunities will come their way. So if anybody has a, referral in that Bay Area that you service, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you, Jim? Well, it's a, the easiest way is my name. Uh, so it's Jim at Jim Wahlberg.com. W-A-L-B-E-R-G. Jim at Jim Wahlberg.com is the easiest way. Jim at Jim Wahlberg, uh, dot com. Now, Jim, let me ask you, uh, do you have any and we didn't talk about this uh, beforehand, so if not, that's okay. But do you have a, you know, if you were to write a book and you had a, either a funny story that pops to your mind when it comes to real estate, it doesn't have to be luxury, or perhaps a, a a story that comes to mind where you shake your head and say, man, I can't believe, you know, somebody, you know, tried to to see this property or whatever it might be. Uh, do you, do you, is there anything that pops to mind where you got a, either a humorous story that you'd like to share or a story where maybe an unqualified buyer tried to, to you know, for whatever reason, tried to see one of your properties? Well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would categorize this as humorous, but I, one of the niches that we serve uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area is the equestrian and country property uh, niche. Uh, we represent right now in one section of the Bay Area about 50% of those kinds of properties. They're very unique. They don't come up for sale very often, but when they do, uh, it really takes a very special expert uh, to know how to be of service appropriately to a seller or a buyer. Uh, because it's such a niche, uh, the buyers that come in to look at these properties generally have never owned a country property in their entire life. Okay. Uh, they have septic tanks, they have wells, propane. Uh, so this is an off the grid kind of property. Mm -hmm. uh, we have developed a disclaimer that we give the buyer up front that the first paragraph says, we advise you to not consider buying a country property ever. Uh, something breaks every month that costs $4,000. Uh, you have no idea how to deal with a septic well or propane systems. Uh, so we advise you not to do it. Uh, the second paragraph in the addendum says, if you disobey us, we'll be glad to give you the phone numbers of others that have disobeyed us and find out from them how it absolutely changed their lives in a very positive way. Uh, so the the buyers uh, find that very interesting. Uh, we do this uh, purposefully because it's absolutely the truth. Uh, if they do disobey us and end up buying the property, 
uh, you can't believe the calls that we get throughout the year saying, Jim, uh, uh, our well pump just broke, it cost $4,000. I know you told me that that was going to happen, uh, and I just need a referral to somebody that can help me. Uh, so it's been a, a really a fun way to have them understand what type of property they're getting into. That's that, I, I really that's a different approach for sure. And uh, you know, what's their initial reaction? Do you just give them this disclosure, or do you give some kind of you know do you have some kind of conversation ahead of time that kind of breaks the ice? Oh no, we do have a conversation and. Uh, I have uh, typically a photograph of a a beautiful uh, $4 million uh, luxury catamaran. Uh, and our, our conversation is about how they probably should buy the catamaran before they buy the property. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So if they do, if they do call and they've got some issues, I'll send them an email with a copy of the photograph of the catamaran that remember I told you to buy the boat. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if, if, if you ever end, own a boat, Jim, you realize they say that the happiest day is the day you get it and the happiest, the, 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 the second happiest day is the day you get rid of the boat. <laughs> it's absolutely correct. Oh, man, that's funny. Well, listen, it's been a, a pleasure. Um, I really appreciate what you're doing for the industry. Um, you know, there's so much divisiveness. My brand is better than your brand, that sort of thing. And you bring a humility to the industry. Um, again, I had a high-profile NFL player looking to sell his home in your area, and, and, and I gave him your information based on, you know, what I've – seen firsthand, as you know. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Keep raising the bar, Jim. And for those of you that are listening, again, one more time, Jim, the best way to get a hold of you, email Jim at... Yeah, it's Jim at jimwalberg.com. Perfect. Thank you for your time, Jim. That, pleasure, again, Michael. for the rest Thank of you... Thank you very much for including me in your podcast. Oh, you're, you're absolutely welcome. And, and I might add, Jim, um, you were on our list of guests but you made yourself available sooner than you thought. So really appreciate your flexibility there. My pleasure. And, and for those of you that still um, have questions in regards to our podcast or perhaps our book, please send those to support at Marketing Luxury Group. We are a member of the industry syndicate. Our podcast is a member of the industry syndicate, which is like a media hub for uh, for real estate agents, those in the mortgage industry, it's really cool. Check it out, Industry Syndicate. If you have any questions about our po our podcast, I already gave you that email. But if you have any questions about our certification, we just launched our brand new website, our brand new platform. We're really excited about it. Our certification, Luxury Listing Specials. Dot com, LuxuryListingSpecials.com. If you have any questions on that, please let us know. But continue to raise the bar in real estate. Have a great holiday. If we don't hear from you, we'll talk to you in 2020. Michael Lafito, keep raising the bar and, and continue to prove others wrong. Take care. <laughs>